In this week's video I will show you the forgotten muscle of the shoulder joint. So you guessed correctly, it's certainly not the supraspinatus muscle, but it's actually the deltoid muscle and it's a quite large muscle and it's visible on every MR scan of the shoulder joint, but still we frequently see lesions there that are not obvious because we are just not looking there and if you don't look you will never see these lesions there. So let's jump right into the cases. So here we have the MR scan of a 20 year old female with shoulder pain which got worse over uh, I think the last few days and she comes to the scan again. She had a scan nine months earlier which was more or less unremarkable and we can see immediately here we don't really have anything obvious so it's a uh, young joint, we have normal tendons, we might have just a little bit of irritation of the subacromial pursa here at this level. Other than that it looks quite uh, unremarkable, some cysts here. And you can spend quite some time with this examination because she really has some pain and um, you really want to know what am I missing because she has this pain. And I'll give you a second here scrolling through nothing really jumps into your eye. But that's why I said the deltoid muscle is quite the forgotten muscle of the shoulder joint. So you can also have a look here at this at this uh, coronal oblique sequence and now we just focus on the deltoid muscle. First you have to always check the origin which is quite okay here. But then if you scroll through, you can start to see that we have some edema here at this level here. And we can also correlate this with our transverse sections where you can see we have these changes here in the muscle. So fluid, a little bit of edema in the deltoid muscle there. And actually that's probably why this patient has uh, pain because she was with physical therapy and they did some loosening of the muscles there and potentially um, although I cannot prove it it might be a result of a very active like massage type of thing of the deltoid muscle to try to loosen the joint or it could also be something like a subtle muscle injury or delayed onset muscle soreness although then I would expect a more uh, a larger area to be affected and not with these uh, streaks of fluid here. So probably muscle injury in the deltoid muscle there. And here is the next patient who had some kind of a injury three days ago um, where he tried to hold a heavy object. So he didn't fall on the shoulder but uh, he had immediate shoulder pain and again the radiologist looked at this one here initially and tried to find out why this patient has uh, quite significant pain and you can look through the images you can look at all the tendons you see the just the normal stuff as you always do and if you don't actively look at the deltoid muscle you will not see the finding right you really have to actively look and now I'm scrolling down try to find the finding Did you see it? Here, you can see there is a subtle edema here in this portion of the deltoid muscle. And it's also nicely visible here on the coronal oblique here. So we have a muscle strain here of the deltoid muscle at the origin here. So a subtle muscle injury that really explains the patient's symptoms. And it really matches the timeline because the injury was three days ago. So we still have some of this uh, edema here. And all the other findings are not really relevant in this setting. And if you think for yourself which parts of the image you are looking, if you scroll through for, for example an axial stack, you have a look at this level, you look at the, this side here, the labrum, the biceps tendon, you look at the humeral head, the insertion of the rotator cuff tendons, then you look cartilage, labrum, labrum, subscapularis tendon, you might even look at the lung, I suggest you do, axillary soft tissues, and that's it. You don't really actively look at this level, maybe up here, but the lower you go, 
your eye will probably not go around here you will keep maybe on your long head of the biceps tendon and then you will miss this one here the same is true for the coronal obliques you have a look at the ac joint again you look for bursal findings labrum rotator cuff tendons axillary joint recess any cartilage defects etc and you might not even scroll all the way to the back here right and sometimes also not all the way to the front and this is where the deltoid muscle can sometimes present with these subtle injuries that really explain the patient's symptoms and we don't have to worry too much about subtle findings and make up any kind of fantasy diagnoses. And here is just the next patient and he had also a fall a few days ago and you can again look through all the other findings you will see this severe supersitis there you look at all this other stuff anyways but really try to give the deltoid muscle a close look just once scrolling through and you will see sometimes edema just like here again a muscle injury a low grade muscle injury with a strain here you can also have a look at this on your transverse sections where you then can see that we have the deltoid muscle with all these different parts and going down here you can see that we have this muscle injury there now there is one important differential diagnosis for this and especially if you do an MR or trography don't call something like this if you have it in this anterior portion if you have the needle path going through the deltoid here at this level for example then it's most likely just iatrogenic either hematoma or during the injection if you do local anesthetic depending on how you do the arthrography uh, don't call it a muscle injury if it's up here so with the coronavirus vaccination coming next year there is another differential diagnosis for findings like this in the future so just keep that in mind if you have anything at this site so before I end this video, I would just like to thank a lot to my newest patrons that joined me since my last YouTube video and I'd like to welcome Omar, Hesham, Jacob Baibes, Samir, Lena, Clarence, Daniel and someone who doesn't want to be named. Thanks a lot guys for your support, it really means a lot. And as I mentioned the last video already, I will focus in a little bit more on Patreon and creating exclusive content over there because I can produce it faster and with our little community over there. So if you want extra videos, then go check the link in the description somewhere down here and consider to become a Patreon because it's uh, really something that I think people are enjoying and I have uh, people with me now for more than one year. Uh, watching my exclusive videos too. Yeah, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching and see you next time.